Hey you guys, how's it going? My name is Jeff, welcome to the channel. Today I want to share with you a story that I read about Charlie Munger that kind of blew my mind because like this is not like anything that happens now, these days. But this happened a long while back before Charlie Munger was a multi-billionaire and super successful. But when you look at his mindset and the way that he was thinking and talking and acting, I think you're going to see little clues, little ways that his behavior back then led him to be who he is today. And, and as an added plus, I actually learned something from this story that I'm putting into practice next week. And I'm going to tell you how I use this lesson I'm going to tell you about right now for my work in this coming week. So the story here is told by this guy named Hal Borthwick. When Charlie remarried, he married this woman named Nancy Munger, and she had some kids from an earlier marriage, and Hal was one of them. So here's the story and the, the theme, I'll just give you the message, is do the job right the first time. So the story goes back to the Minnesota times. They used to live in Minnesota. One of my jobs as a driving teenager was to pick up and deliver the housekeeper from this town called Cass Lake. So this wasn't just like a drive down the street, he said. The boat had to be driven across the lake to the marina where I would then hop into the car and drive to town and then the process was reversed. Part of the job in the morning was to pick up the newspaper while I was in town. Well, one day a big storm blew in. Rain, waves, wind, etc. big time. With all the excitement and difficulty, I did get to town in the morning and I returned with the maid, but forgot the paper. Charlie and I had a one second or so discussion after I answered the question, where's my paper, in the negative. So he basically said, oh, I forgot. And he said, Charlie Munger said, go back and get the paper and never forget it again. Period. Exclamation point. So back I went through the storm to get the paper, bouncing in the waves with rain sheeting off the boat, thinking to myself that I wasn't going to allow anything like that to ever happen again. So, you know, this sounds pretty extreme. It's a newspaper, right? He could have said, oh, no big deal. Like, I've got some books to read or, you know, I'll reread yesterday's, new whatever. But I don't think this was about Charlie not having his newspaper and that being such a horrible thing. I think this was about teaching his stepson, when you've got a job, do it right the first time, focus. If you need to write down a little checklist, write down the checklist. Don't screw up. Don't be a screw up. <laughs> and you know, it's in these little details where you go like, no, oh, he could have let it slide, whatever. But if you're sloppy about the little details like that, then bring into the world kids who don't really care about details who are sloppy. And he didn't want his kids to be like that. I got a big job coming up next week. I'm a photographer and I have a big photo shoot over the course of three days. And we're talking some of these days, I'm you know, up early in the morning, I get there first thing, start my day, and I'm just working several hours photographing everyone from the head of the company onto all the people that work there. And it's in a number of different rooms with different backgrounds and different lighting. So in setting this up last week, uh, the woman who hired me to do this and organize the logistics with me, she said, hey, Jeff, you're welcome to come on by any time this week and just check out the location, check out the area, make sure it works for you. And in my mind, I thought, oh, I don't want to like have to drive over there. It's like they don't pay you to scout the location. They don't pay you to get prepared to do your job. I can just go there next week and wing it. I'm sure it will work out fine. That's just lazy me. You know, there's other things that I would rather do. I'm not going to get into them, but you know, the laziness factor. So, but what I did was I thought, you know what? She invited you to come over, like be nice, take her up on the offer. And who knows, maybe you'll, maybe it will benefit you as a photographer. So anyway, I went there Friday and I'm really glad I showed up because there were a lot of things that I needed to pay attention to. And I was actually able, I brought my cameras, I brought my flash equipment, I brought my backgrounds and I was able to just, throw them all up and move them around and like work out the beats in my head and in the rooms to figure out where everything's going to go 
so that tomorrow when I show up to do the shoot, I'm not starting at square one, starting at the beginning. If I were to make an analogy, this is like an airline pilot going and like checking out the plane, doing a walk around, looking at the tires, looking at the brakes, looking at the landing gear, checking out the engines, making sure there's nothing, no debris that's gonna cause a mistake when they're in flight. So, you know, this is the kind of being prepared that professionals need to do. And I think all of us are capable of cutting corners or doing it the easy way and not being fully prepared, but you just wing it. The Charlie Munger approach, not about being lazy. These lessons are useful. I'm gonna share with you one more story. It's a short story, but you're gonna like it. It's gonna be good for you. It's like nutritious food. It's like eating something that's mm, not junk food. Okay, I'll just tell you what the message is of this second story. It's be responsible. And it's told by the same guy, Hal, stepson. Charlie's mother drove herself from Omaha to Minnesota each summer. When she was there, we used her car for errands. There was but one set of keys. And while I was playing with friends in a sailing boat on the lake, the keys fell out of my pocket and into five feet of murky, muddy, gross, slimy water. I went home and I confessed. Of course, in the great North Woods, there aren't many locksmiths. And with Charlie, there wasn't patience for such stupidity. The solution, again, in about a second, was go out with your friends and keep diving till you get those keys and don't come home without them. After about two hours of diving, with the sun sinking like a stone, the miraculous glint of metal in the weeds was before my eyes, and I could go home. There are a lot of these gems from Minnesota because in those days when Charlie worked so hard and so long, that was the only meaningful time we spent with him. During the work weeks, he was off before dawn, and home about dinner time, and then he studied Standard and Poor's, and later would spend a couple hours on the phone with Warren. So there you have it. Charlie Munger himself was not taking it easy, living this you know, relaxed life, just chilling out, kicking his feet up. He was working from morning till night, and he was paying attention to detail. So with his stepson, with Hal, he didn't want him to get lazy and to just, oh, you lost the keys, oh well. You forgot the newspaper, oh well. You know, it was about like focusing on the things that are your responsibility. People who are super successful, like Charlie, like Warren Buffett, these two guys are very, they're similar in so many ways. The idea is most of the things out there are way beyond your control. Like you can't understand everything about everything. But there are things within your circle of competence. There are things within your reach that you can handle. So do those things really well, whatever it is, whether it's with your family, helping out around the house, with your children, with your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your teachers, your schoolwork, your job. Do that work really well. No excuses, no forgetting the stuff you're supposed to remember. Write it down, make a little checklist, and just do everything. Just keep on going till you do all the work. So that's what I wanna share with you. And it's not because I figured it all out, it's because I'm learning it, I'm learning it, I'm reading this book, and then I'm coming across these stories, and I'm like, you know, what good is this story if it sticks in a page of a book that's hundreds of pages long, and maybe nobody reads that story. So I read it, I'm sharing it with you. So next time you're feeling like taking it casual, like doing it tomorrow, like that's someone else's problem, why should I be responsible? Well, you do it, and you're gonna have a measure of success and things working out in a good way for you that you might not imagine because people like leadership. People like people who step up and take responsibility and just finish things. Just do that job. See it through to completion. So I hope you've liked this video. I hope it's useful to you. Does it remind you of anything? Do you have any stories of your own? Just, 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 just
type, type it, type, put it in the comment section. That's how I find out that you watch this and you're interested in it. And I'm really glad you watched this video. I really am. So like it if you have not liked it. I will see you in the next video.